Today, I'd like to delve into the intricate matter of time swiftly ticking away for short sellers. My intention is to provide an in-depth exploration of how they have tactically maneuvered their margin call and liquidation parameters into progressively tighter corners, rendering them increasingly susceptible and exposed to the specter of liquidation events. Moreover, I aim to shed light on the instances where notable figures such as Doug Sifu and Ken Griffin have managed to sidestep margin calls, often receiving clemency from the DTCC. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. Recently, a tweet by Dave Lauer brought to the forefront a phenomenon that had largely remained under the radar. Firms preceding the events of January 2021 seem to have adopted a practice of either disregarding or obtaining exemptions for excess capital charges. This lenient approach to financial responsibility gave rise to brokers with inadequate capital, leaving them incapable of fulfilling their commitments. Lauer's tweet raises a critical alarm regarding this perilous behavior, highlighting it as a substantial threat and an ethical quagmire. He ponders whether this trend of indulgence persists into 2022 and 2023. Lauer advances a cogent solution, the imposition of accountability on brokers and market makers by enforcing margin calls and consequential liquidations. Newly published research has shown a spotlight on instances where firms incurred charges for excessive capital premiums. A comparative analysis was conducted between calculated charges and the actual charges applied, spanning the years 2021, 2020, and even earlier. Notably, both Instanet and Robinhood experienced substantial margin calls being waived by the DTCC. Robinhood's staggering $2.5 billion margin call was reduced to a paltry $20 million, while Instanet's massive $66 billion saw a significant reduction to $17 billion. The leading eight firms accountable for 90% of these charges exhibited varying capacities to navigate potential capital premium charges. Nonetheless, a disconcerting trend emerged these firms repeatedly amassed excessive risk, showing a distinct lack of deterrence from such charges. Over a time frame spanning from January 2019 to February 2021, out of a total of 277 margin calls, an astonishing 63 instances witnessed these charges either not being applied or being significantly diminished. The practice of waiving margin calls is not confined to a singular occurrence in 2021. Rather, it transpired across a staggering 63 separate occasions throughout 2020 and 2019. It is important to note that this tally excludes potential further waivers that may have transpired during the later months of 2021, 2022 and conceivably 2023. Insights gleaned from interviews with NSCC officials suggest that certain member firms knowingly engage in high-risk trading activities, taking calculated risks with the expectation that the margin call would either be manageable or likely to be waived. Notably, the president and CEO of Robinhood Financial conveyed confidence that their institutional size would shield them from NSCC intervention. Lauer cogently contends that this disposition poses significant risk and presents a glaring moral hazard, necessitating swift rectification. Intriguingly, Biggums has undertaken investigations concerning virtue, asserting that its controlling shareholder, Vincent Viola, manipulates virtue's corporate structure to benefit at the expense of public shareholders. Despite the board's cognizance of this matter, they have effectively facilitated Viola's actions and withheld crucial documents required for an investigation. Consequently, Virtue not only enjoys the luxury of wave margin calls, but also faces scrutiny for potential stockholder manipulation. Shifting the focus to AMC, top stock alerts predicts an imminent resurgence, forecasting the possibility of a surge beyond $5 per share and potentially even into double digits. While skepticism may abound, it's important to consider historical patterns. 
Remarkably, each time AMC breached a specific trend line after being pushed below $20 per share, it was invariably followed by a notable surge, often followed by calculated maneuvers to suppress prices. This pattern indicates that as AMC's price ascends above this trend line, the shorts find themselves exposed to increasing risks with $5.33 per share emerging as a critical juncture. The gradual decline in the trend line slope and the corresponding decrease in margin call and liquidation levels can be attributed to the shorts intensification of their synthetic short position. With their synthetic shorts proliferating, even minor price escalations on AMC can trigger a cascade of liquidations. This starkly contrasts with a time when AMC needed to reach significantly higher price points to threaten short positions. This trajectory downwards has positioned the shorts precariously, with AMC's price on the verge of surpassing critical thresholds, potentially heralding the much-debated squeeze. Recent indicators suggest that hedge funds are escalating their short positions, not just directly in AMC but also through ETFs linked to AMC and GameStop. Drawing parallels with historical patterns where increased shorting precedes significant events, such as the events of January 2021, it is conjectured that these institutions may be anticipating a credit event or a market crash. These concerns are underscored by recent turmoil in China's real estate market, which has witnessed an 82% decline since its zenith in May 2021. The Yassin Course's commentary on a potential crash linked to China's real estate challenges has sparked discussion about the potential global implications. Echoing this sentiment, Michael Gade suggests that China might act as the catalyst for a credit event that could trigger a market crash. In light of these concerns, even individuals and entities unrelated to AMC or GameStop are voicing trepidation about market stability. This unease is juxtaposed against efforts by major banks to maximize gains from the ongoing tech rally before an impending crash. AZVC's significant elevation of NVIDIA's price target exemplifies this endeavor, leading some investors to brace for an inevitable downturn. In conclusion, the clock is ticking ever louder for short sellers, as an amalgamation of factors including reduced margin call thresholds, market uncertainties, and potential triggers could lead them into treacherous terrain. The gradual reduction of margin call thresholds due to strategic synthetic short positions has placed short sellers in a precarious predicament. Additionally, the looming shadow of instability in China's real estate market and growing apprehensions about market stability suggest a looming credit event. As various experts and even unrelated entities voice disquiet, the future of the market remains shrouded in uncertainty, leaving short sellers and retail investors alike on edge. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.